Ellis B. Feaster's Radio Air Check and Classic TV Channel. This is KDKA, Group W, Westinghouse Broadcasting for Pittsburgh, and this is Jack Wheeler, hoping you'll listen to my show from midnight till 6 a.m. right here on KDKA. Good afternoon, this is Lauren Mann for KDKA News. At 1 o'clock, the temperature is 29 degrees. KDKA's official forecast predicts steady to slowly falling temperatures this afternoon. We'll take a look at the weather forecast following the news. The Institute of Real Estate Management sharply criticized the city of Pittsburgh today for the proposed hike in real estate taxes. The Institute also promised to help the city find other ways of raising the necessary funds to finance itself during the upcoming year. The president of the organization, Louis Egelberg, explained. I sent the following telegram to the president of city council, city of Pittsburgh. Uh, we are shocked and frightened by the irresponsible actions of the city councilmen and their determination to tax the property owner and to tax out the city of, uh, and the tenant out of the city of Pittsburgh. We urge you to reconsider this confiscatory action before dealing the death blow to the owners and tenants of this city. We implore you not to destroy real estate values by further escalation of the tax load. The increased assa assessments, coupled with millage increases, can only lead to disaster for all peoples involved. The Institute of Real Estate Manage Management is available to seek other ways and means of developing the required revenue to operate this city. Uh, this city. Please avail yourself of these talents. Signed, the Institute of Real Estate Management, Louis Engelberg, President. Engelberg also warned that if city council adopts the proposed real estate tax increases, rental rates will increase possibly 15%. He added that he has advised the property owners to economize as much as possible. Pittsburgh City Council will resume this afternoon. The councilmen will be seeking ways to finance Pittsburgh during the next fiscal year. Their problems were increased last night when the State House downed a bill that would have allowed the city to double its occupation tax. This action by the State House caused a $3 million hole to form in the city's record $101 million budget for next year. In Harrisburg, legislators are still working on the state's fiscal mess. We get details from Group W's and KDKA's Harrisburg Bureau Chief, Sandy Starabin. Compromise attempts at reaching a tax package before the end of the year 1969 have apparently collapsed again. Senate Democrats and Republicans are due to return to the Senate chamber momentarily after apparently fruitless caucuses. Reportedly, Senate Democrats may bring to a vote six business tax bills, the same bills that were defeated last night when they were sponsored by the Republican side. When the Democrats bring them up, the bills will be upgraded, more money added. To pass, the bills will need Republican support. At this moment, Republican support for the higher business taxes is problematical. So far, the sticky situation in the Senate continues unabated. This is Sandy Starobin on the floor of the State Senate in Harrisburg. All five of the French-made gunboats have arrived at the Israeli port of Haifa. They sailed from a French port Christmas morning. Two vessels were the first to tie up. The three others did so later. The crews, wearing civilian clothes, were met by their families and relatives. They refused to meet with newsmen. The Israeli oil company, which is primarily concerned with the vessels, said a news conference will be held later. The boats reportedly will be used in connection with an Israeli-American oil drilling venture in the Mediterranean Sea. Meanwhile, Israeli warplanes staged another raid on Egyptian positions along the Suez Canal today. The bombing and strafing of artillery and anti-aircraft sites along the southern sector of the canal was carried out over an 80-minute period. Vice President Spiro Agnew is to visit Vietnam tomorrow. He'll arrive in Saigon for a 10-hour visit. He's now in the Philippines. In the war zone, a shaky ceasefire is in effect. But before the Allied ceasefire went into effect, U.S. officials said three Americans and some 250 communist troops were killed in some of the heaviest fighting in a month. A second U.S. soldier faces court-martial in connection with the alleged My Lai massacre. He's Staff Sergeant David Mitchell who's to be tried on charges of assault with intent to commit murder of some 30 Vietnamese civilians. Returning to the local scene, the county commissioners are saluting outgoing Mayor Pitts, uh, Joseph Barr today on his last day in office as mayor of the city of Pittsburgh. The ceremony is being held in the gold room of the courthouse. 
On Wall Street at 1 o'clock, the Dow Jones Industrials were up 482, the volume 11,350,000 shares. Now the weather for Pittsburgh and vicinity, KDKA's official forecast, windy and colder with snow flurries this afternoon and steady or slowly falling temperatures. Diminishing winds and colder tonight with a chance of snow flurries, the low 22. New Year's Day, variable cloudiness and cold with a high of 28. The probability of precipitation, 40% tonight and 20% Wednesday. The present temperature is 29 degrees. The relative humidity, 75%. The top news story at this hour, the Institute of Real Estate Management says that rental rates in the Pittsburgh area will increase if City Council approves the proposed increase in real estate taxes. You've been listening to the KDKA News at 1, portions pre-recorded, the next scheduled KDKA News at 2 o'clock this afternoon. This is Lauren Mann, KDKA News. Just about six minutes past the hour of 1 o'clock, we'll take a look at more music on the Art Palin Show after a KDKA editorial. Here is a KDKA editorial by Group W Vice President Edward Wallace. More than a year ago, we pointed out the need to provide a way out for the drug addict. We noted then the alarming increase in the use of narcotics, and we note now that the problem is growing. It's not being solved. Drug addicts can be cured, and we know that many of them want to be cured. We must provide hope and help to them. There's been too much talk and too little action. What few programs are in existence are pitifully inadequate. A major reason for this lack of action is that there are too many cooks, all hopefully trying to help, but there is no one really in charge. Just to name a few of the official agencies which are concerned, there are the District Attorney's Office, the County Health Department, the New Mental Health and Mental Retardation County Board, the Police, the Coroner's Office, and other enforcement officials in more than 100 communities. These are just at the county and city level. At the state level, there are the State Department of Health, the Department of Welfare, the Department of Public Instruction, the Department of Corrections, the State Police, and the State's Attorney General. But no one is in charge. The drug problem is not isolated to one community. It's statewide, even national in scope. We suggest that Governor Schaefer call a statewide meeting of all the people involved in solving the problem of drug abuse. These would include educators at the college and secondary levels, religious leaders, medical and psychological experts, law enforcement officials, county and state health officials, and all the others concerned about the growing drug addiction. By coordinating our knowledge and concentrating on the legal, moral, and social aspects of drug addiction, we may find the weapons which we can combat this growing problem with. This has been a KDKA editorial by Group W Vice President Edward Wallace. You may comment on this editorial or obtain a copy of it by writing to KDKA, Pittsburgh, 15222. KDKA recognizes its duty to present responsible opinion on all sides of important public issues. Our editorial policy aims to help our listeners to a better understanding of those issues. It's eight minutes after one. More music in the Art Palin Show with the greatest of the 60s. 